this be? Uh, so I'll start to grind up some of this corn. Yeah, let me get the grinder. Yeah, the grinder's already there. Oh, you already got it? Yeah, we got the grinder set up. Get some of the going. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 it's like this. This is the old grinder we've been using for years. This is Camila's grandpa, kid. My grandma's, yeah. My grandma's. Yeah, we're still using it. It's still, it still works really, really well. That was a red chili that I grinded up before, so I, we use a grinder for everything. The first thing you do is harvest the blue corn and we roast it on the oven to get that really nice smoky flavor. Hey, good morning, Emilio. What's happening, mijito? Huh? You doing good? Yeah. Good. Mm, what's nice is you've got the chili mixed in. I know, it's going to be a killer blend, man. It's, it's going to be, be really, really nice. It's a pretty color. Okay. And I put it to simmer. It's nice to get started like this. I remember Grandpa Bustos, and he'd get up, he'd have a little fire going. Grandma had a tea, a little atole for him. And then as soon as the sun would come up, he'd be with the mules. He'd be right away starting getting the mule ready, go do his farm work or getting his hoe and his shovels irrigating. And your grandpa. My yeah. grandpa too, he'd leave early to go do, he'd get up early and like have coffee and toast and then leave. Yeah. And then come back. Cows and the pigs and the chickens. Part of the job is to go feed them, make sure they were okay, make sure they had water for the day. Yeah, this is my favorite part of the day. Salud. Salud. Thanks, sweetie. Thanks. Dawn's special blend. Mm. Ooh, that's hot. Mm, it came out perfect. <laughs> Flame throwing. A toilet. Mm, no, man, it's just right. <laughs> We'll see you guys. Hey, and bye, Emilio. Take care. Okay. Ya viene amaneciendo. trabajando para mantener a lo que quiero tanto We're gonna get started now man. a fun start <laughs> We're so blessed that we can still do this a second work it represents freedom. I don't have to depend on anybody to feed my family. I don't have to depend on anybody to give me a job. I don't have to depend on any government. I don't have to depend on anybody. It's when young boys are allowed to work with men and you're valued as a man and not a child anymore. That's a pretty big piece for a young man and you're allowed to hang out with the guys that know what they're doing. So it's a rite of passage. And then it's a, it's a community effort. So there's a lot of layers involved with the acequias, huh? Slow down, man, I'm a little fun. Come on, dog, you gotta run. Gotta See, run, you gotta, gotta run. run. Hustle, hustle. Be right there now. It's not gonna tip over. Is it nice and stiff? See how you need a little bit more. I think it's just keeps feathering it up. I'll keep pushing it up uh, Maybe put a little bit more in here. You know what I mean? Okay, fine. and then uh, fill it in here about an inch inch and a half thick And then I'll keep feathering it out as we go Okay. Yeah, does it make sense? Did you bring a board by chance? I did not bring a board. I can go get one real quick now. 
Before we couldn't even crawl through there, we cleaned all that whole sick out by hand. That's what I say to myself. I go, man, if you do this a few times every week, stay pretty fit. You know, moving and irrigating and making sure that doesn't get full of trash. And gotta make sure you don't get bit by dogs. All sorts of good stuff. What do they say? One person's trash is another man's. So when I was a young kid, which wasn't that long ago, my dad and my mom would farm all of these 20 acres and we'd have sweet corn and green chili. And my mom ran the farm and it was her. And I remember a couple of aunts and they did everything and then they'd hire people as we needed it to weed or to hoe or to transplant. And it didn't seem like it was that big of a deal, huh? And it doesn't seem that big of a deal today. Yeah, so if they can do it, we can do it. No doubt. I tell you, man, we're walking the same steps our ancestors walked 400 years ago, you know. The curves, the same depth, everything's the same. It is so freaking awesome, huh? Same land produces food for 400 years, sustained our family and families in the community. It's, it's like, this is the just and right thing people should be doing. Not everybody's lifestyle, but People that choose it should be allowed to, to live it to its fullest. Oh no, this is cool. That's a piece of land that my ancestors farmed, huh? I can imagine them just doing the same thing you and I are doing. The same, same thing. That is so freaking cool, huh? Hold on, get a little more. Huh? You know, there's a saying, huh? Al golpe aprende uno, no? Hit yourself in the head enough times you'll learn. Say that again? Al golpe aprende uno, no? Al golpe. golpe. Yeah. What do you think? Is it looking good? Yeah. I think it's looking really good, dude. They're gonna think we know what we're doing. Sure has changed. When I was a kid, I'd be the one running around this and like a not know. Everybody be telling me what to do. Now I feel like the old guy standing around just watching. Yeah, baby, look at that. Gracias a Dios y que nos bendiga todos. We're blessed, dude. It's good. We got water flowing in the Azequia de Santa Cruz. So the water comes down, flows down the river. It's great water and silt. You figure that we're irrigating with fish emulsion, if you think about it, because the lake holds the fish and then the fish poop in it. Then the water comes down the river and we irrigate our fields. So a beautiful, beautiful mixture of how nature works into, the, uh, into our agricultural area. So up there at the top, we open the presa. The water comes down the head gates. It's coming down the acequia. Right here, we have a diversion. This is called the desagüe. It's part of the cleaning of the acequias. That head gate, water will come down, wash out here. The sand goes back to the river. We'll close the head gate there. This head gate opens up the way it is. And the water runs down the acequia de Santa Cruz. See how the acequia and the water line is going there? You see the white water marks. I think we got over a half, maybe three quarters. I'm gonna let this water out a little bit more and then I can increase the volume. But I'm gonna go check the sideway again to make sure there's no trash. And once I close that one, then I can open this one and increase the volume for the longer length. Huh? So it's a little game back and forth and 
it's every year it's different and we'll practice it as we go year by year or month by month varying on the pressure in the water and the river that's why somebody has to be here every week it's not like automatic you just turn it on and then go to sleep you come in here you gauge how much is in the river you gauge how much pressure how long sand everything's a science huh and then you release the water as you're needing throughout the acequias to get the volume to push everything out and get the water you need. Western water law dictates how water is used and acquired throughout the state of New Mexico. The doctrine is native people, second people, and then urban or city areas, the third rights or junior water rights. But uh, that's being discussed right now, you know, is that's what the state engineer is arguing about with us right now is that uh, people aren't using their water. And so that the state engineer can re come back and re-adjudicate the water rights and say, well, you're not using the water, we're gonna re-adjudicate them to people that are using it or best use of water, which a lot of times is people feel that's urban development. So to me, it's a mass land grab and water grab to displace traditional communities and cultures. Because if there's no water, where are they gonna get it? They're gonna steal it from us. So we have to use our water. And we have to use every damn drop of it too. Looks like that movie's a blob. Oh, it just stuff just rolls on through, man. This is good. Here we go, homie. Here we go. And listen to it just push everything out of the way. We got it, man. See how cool the water runs backwards, too. It works the way it's supposed to. These viejitos are good, no? Well, doing the same thing we did on the big one, except this is just a small lateral. No, we're making sure all the leaves are out, all the flow's good. This is part of our ritual of survival. Who would believe this little stream, huh? Four and a half acres can be irrigated on that little bit of water you see right there. Tens of thousand pounds of food, vegetables and crops. All of that little bit of water right there. Without this water, no communities would exist. No modern cities, no urban areas, no Colonial settlers, no native populations, nothing exists without this right here, water. So I grew up right here, right here where you see me doing, right here today. Shit, I did this same thing. 56 years ago, 58 years ago, I did the same thing we're doing right, right now. And I can guarantee you, my ancestors did it 400 years ago. Same thing right here where we're standing, same, same thing. One, two, three, four. I'm trying to lay out a really rough crop plan. First of all, I start off with the uh, Dia de los Santos and I try to be real conscious about what the days mean because it's about a spiritual process and it's about acknowledging the Creator. So the first one I start off is Dia de San Isidro, which is on May 15th. 
and that's the farmer's day. So by that day, the farmer should have the fields all planted up. We should have most of the crops in their place. And then I have another critical date that I really follow too, and that's Dia de San Juan, and that's in June 24th. By then, and the saying that's always been in our family and the past families that I know of is that make sure you get your corn planted by Dia de San Juan, mijito. Then the other way I like to kind of plan a little bit too is I kind of like to plan around the moon cycles also. The new moon is best for like planting leafy greens or for doing a transplant. Anything above ground, new moon is doing really, really good. But to me, you know, I got taught by grandpa, grandma, great grandma. It's more instinctual. You just more or less know when the days are coming up. So these things that we're doing right here are just a general guide. And I tell people it's just a guide just to start to think about what you want to do. Because the real time to tell when to plant is when you walk outside. Yeah, old grandpa, I remember we'd be walking the fields with grandpa. And he would mira pa allá, esta la hormiga esa chiquita, todavía te va a faltar dos semanas para sembrar, no? So he would be observing and showing me and talking about this. Always looking down and always observing what was going on. So those are little baby sugar ants. That's the first ones that come out. And then after this one's the next one that we should be seeing are the big black ants. And then after that, it's the red ants. And once the red ants come on, you see a few ant hills of red ants, then you know that the soil temperature is warm enough to be able to grow any crop at a rapid rate. Now, as I go through older and I learn about pest management, mating seasons, you know, Grandpa knew all about that. And he showed us as we were walking through a field, Otaya no leche el tobacco, no. He would make a, a, a mix of Indian tobacco with water and he would spray it on the bugs when they were baby baby, when they were changing from a larvae to an insect. And that would just kill their neuro system and make them go away. Now there's all science behind it and it's, it, it's a toxin because it has caffeine in it and stuff. But all that old science, that is amazing how much they knew and when to use it properly instead of just wasting it, they knew exactly when to apply it. But that's the kind of stuff I learned from grandpa, just observation, when to plant, what to look for. Oh, and then my mom too, we have these lilac bushes back here too. Little lilac bushes like this. If it's flowering, my mom would always tell me it's okay to go ahead and put peas and cold weather crops, the kale, the spinach, arugula. The cold weather crops are okay to put them because they can handle a small frost. That's another indicator of what to plant and when to plant it. We've been watering pretty well now in the spring. It looks pretty, pretty nice. See that is a white peak right there? Yeah, that's Santa Clara. So everybody has always said, don't plant until after that snow melts up there, that peak. And uh, I've done it before. My mom always told me, man, ter terco, no. And because I always, oh, it's, oh, it's warm enough and most of the time it freezes. And But thanks now to the technology we've been able to use and develop, it allows us to be able to grow produce like this in the middle of the winter. Huh? So we've kind of broken the rules a little bit by using technology that allows us to pay the bills 12 months a year. So that's what's so innovative about what we're trying to do and that's why we're able to do it still and, and have people help us. surfing desert style. What we're doing is we're leveling the land too so that we can get the land nice and flat so when we flood irrigate the water goes really really slow and it has a time to sink into the ground and sink into the roots itself. But this is a lot of fun. We've been doing it for, I've been doing it for over 50 years, 55 years since I was a kid. I got my younger brother Robert when he'd be a little kid we we're a little older than him and he'd fall over the front we'd run over him. And then he'd jump up scared and jump back on the board again, huh? And, and he did it before our dad caught us because he would have chased us away if he would have caught us messing around. <laughs> I look forward to this every year. This is kind of like my fun time in front of the year, huh? I bet you thinking I'm going to charge people to start to do this on a yearly basis. Surfing the farm at Santa Cruz Farm.
fields were blessed last year and watered with our with our spiritual water the water from the Santa Cruz River was grown it matured to green and then matured to red we ate green chili we harvested the red we dried it saved the seeds and it's the same chili that's been grown on our land for generations and generations I started by soaking the chili seed about three or four days ago and what I want to do is I want to loosen it up I want to get it nice and moist I want that shell to start to break up I make sure that there's at least 40 or 50 seeds in each one a nice little what they call un punito de semilla para un punito así de semilla se lo ponen los deditos at the tip of your fingers and as you're putting it in the soil you're bending down at the same time you're touching the creator's earth and you're putting it in the soil you can feel the spirit and you're saying una pa dios unos pa los vecinos y uno pa nosotros no so only a half inch yeah just like at the bottom of your finger the, the knuckle no the, wherever that first knuckle goes okay because you don't want to get any deeper than that that should be about a half inch to three quarters no yeah and then when you throw the little soil on tap you just tap it lightly so you don't get that seed the soil contact no You might be a little bit on the dry area too. You might want to try to put it right on the edge here where it's moist. Okay. That way, like that one. You just go like that. See how you go like that? More in right here. Yeah. And then you're doing it right on this side because the sun comes out first. It warms up the soil and then the warm stays warm. No. You always plant on the sunny side. Huh? And then the wind comes from the south. So the bottom of the hill protects those little tiny plants from getting the wind burn too. Okay. And we'll build a berm up. And as the plant grows, we build a berm and we protect it more and more no, from the wind. Gets the morning sun, but it's protected from the afternoon winds. I take a stretch break. Back when I was a young kid, I'd do this all day. An old fart. Yeah, I take a stretch. This is my office. Sure, blessed. Oh, it doesn't get much better than this, man. So when I was a kid, I'd be following Grandpa, and Grandpa had an old mule, and, and he'd be plowing up the fields, and the plow would get stuck, and he'd have to wiggle that damn plow out of the, out of the stuckness, out of the roots, and, and after the episode, he'd get the plow back down in there, so it'd be pouring down his head, and... The mule would be ready to go and he'd take off his hat and he'd put his hat like that and wipe the sweat off his forehead and then he'd go, Oh, hala! If the creator wills it, it'll be. And then he'd just, Hur! and the mule would be going forward and he'd get his plow. And, and he'd be going forward. So everything we do is, if the creator wills it, we'll have a good chili field, huh? Not up to us. We'll do our part. We ask for the blessings of God over the Santa Cruz Ranch and over the Ezequiel on this feast day of St. John the Baptist, the patron saint of all the waters. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, now and forever and ever. Amen. 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 Bless the water and the bridge. Quisiera ser un San Juan, quisiera ser un San Pedro, pa venir y a saludar con la música del cielo, de las estrellas del cielo. Tengo que bajarte dos. Unas para saludarte, otras para decirte adiós. Con jazmines y flores, este día voy a adornar. Hoy por 
día de tu santo te venimos a cantar. And we pray for the blessing of God over this field and all who here work and all who benefit from all their goods. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Despierta, mi bien, despierta, hoy mi Dios te trae maravilla. Las mañanitas norteñas he venido a cantar con tus padrecitos lindos, abuelitos y familiar. Estas bellas florecitas, tal vez joven o viejitas, con los pajaritos canto las norteñas mañanitas. ¡Ay, qué alegría! Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been eight years now. I'm here working at dance farm and uh, I've been enjoying it a lot. You know, it's very challenging sometimes with the with the pests and the grasshoppers and water and everything. And but it's nice. It's a hard job though. That's for sure. Yeah, look at this piece. This one, it's a little bit old, not old, but it's more farm. Sweet. So when the people ask me at the market, how are your peas doing? I have an answer for them. Same with the strawberries, tomatoes, blackberries, you know. So, so I'm lucky that I'm the one that it's first has to taste the flavor of the things we grow, like char. I'm not a fan of char, but this is what I do at the farm. I taste it, and then I sell it. Mm -hmm. At the market, you go and you set up, you put your produce, even though you don't sell everything, sometimes people Hi. always appreciate you. Hi, Hi Juana. How are you? People always smiling to you. And some people is telling thank you for giving us a healthy thing. And this is this is what it is, you know. We grow everything natural and that's what we give the people. And that makes me feel like I need to go back to work and keep growing more food. Pretty sure that if I were working in an office or some other place, nobody's going to tell me thank you for your job or Thank you for what you do, or we need you, you know. I like to see the plants healthy and full of life. 
you know, it's if you are surrounded by healthy things, you also become healthy. We met at the market. I was working at the cafe selling coffee. And Nettie was selling lettuce. <laughs> Nettie made the first move, the second move. He made a lot of moves before. <laughs> She, uh, she didn't want to go, she wanted to go walk her dogs instead, <laughs> but finally, finally, and then she's here, she never leave, she got a good thing, <laughs> she got the good veggies. <laughs> Sasha is going to have a baby on October 12th, and uh, it's a Friday, and usually Fridays are harvest day, harvest day here in, at the farm. So we're gonna harvest the baby on October 12th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Where I'm at, you know, probably like four or five years ago, I was living just a little north from here in a little town called Penasco. And I was addicted to painkillers, I was addicted to heroin. I was addicted to, you know, you name it, Zannies, you know, now a bunch of different names for stuff. And so I was able to escape that life by coming to the farm. So by me coming to the farm, it gave me something to do. It gave me somebody to hang out with. It gave me responsibility. And it just showed me a whole different way of life. You know, and be able to just escape and be able to come to a safe place and do therapy and come and do stuff like this, like harvest salad, arugula, blackberries, very therapeutic. Everything that we do here, every, all the different ways that Don teaches us and all the processes we go through, it all, it all comes back to me because like my grandpa, my dad, everybody's done farming before. And so I, Don reminds me of them in all these different ways. So I think of my, my parents a lot and it wasn't a job, it was a way of life. And that's what I'm trying to get for myself. My ancestors used to farm land just like this. You know, I have grandpas that used to go to Washington DC and fight for our water and just so many different things. So it has connected me with my, my roots. At the end of the day, when you go home and you say, oh, I harvested 150 pounds of salad, washed and begged it, you know, harvested 20 flats of blackberries or 10 flats of blackberries, you know, it's an accomplishment and it's not even hard. By Don being here, it gave me a best friend. He has saved my life for sure. I remember being a little kid, and instead of us using a tractor and a, and a trailer like this, we'd be using a couple old, an old wagon, and Grandpa had his old mule, and the mules would be pulling the wagon, would be throwing the corn inside the, inside the wagon, just like it is right now. The seed itself came from Santo Domingo. The ears, a long, beautiful ear. They're all beautiful, long ears, but look, no worm tips, nothing. It's a beautiful ear of corn. So I'm gonna save this one for seed. I like to do this because I wanna make sure that we pull the husk back and that the corn dries properly so that we're gonna be able to sure that we sun dry it. And then we'll be able to uh, take it to the mill to get it milled for blue corn otone and blue corn meal. If we take care of these leaves, we can clean them up and then they can be used for uh, tamales because the leaves are so nice and big and wide. But I want to point out that in the spring, we we're real careful where we planted. So now after we harvest the corn, we can come back and harvest the beans. And then even if it were to frost tonight and we didn't pick all the corn stalks, the idea is that the corn stalks would protect the beans and we'd be able to harvest them. And that you can see, I don't know if you notice, we try to pull out our corn in three stalks also, right? Because this is a three sisters patch. 
And I think the more we can stick to the theme, the better things seems to grow. So we get beautiful corn like this. Beautiful green beans. It's been a good crop for squash also. All from the same piece of land. You got it, Emilio? Yeah. 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 We got it, eh? I think I'm obsessed with chili and corn, man. Like when people say, oh, I have a job. No, it's not a job once you get obsessed with the chili. The chili owns you. So this is the way we preserve them. We go ahead and start to roast them like this so that we can go ahead and peel them, de-stem them, de-seed them, take the skin off of them. Back when I was a kid, we'd go ahead and roast it in an open flame with a grill on it. And I remember my aunt, my mom would sit around and then go ahead and peel it. Then leave the stem on it. And they'd hang each individual chili on a line with a cheesecloth. And they'd dry it so that we'd have dried chili throughout the winter. Dry green chili that they could mix in with different kinds of food. Well, you know, there was a study done. They were doing cancer research. And she was trying to give these mice and rats a bunch of chili so that they would get cancer in the stomach so they could do the research. And they became the healthiest mice and rats in the lab. Huh? And she goes, those damn devil chilies never got anybody sick. Huh? You know, this might be one of the magic fruits on the planet Earth. The best chili is grown right here in Santa Cruz Farm. Huh? And it's just because I grow it myself. <laughs> More do you want, no? Yeah, <laughs> we're lucky. Is that the medium hot? Yeah, oh. yeah. It's not the hot, hot one. No, you don't like the hot one, no? Oh, no, that no, this is a good medium hot, no? Dad, Dad! There's a chili. You want chili? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tia. All these kids, no? Eh, maybe one of these guys will be a farmer one day. All those. <laughs> That's what they need is a crew. We're looking for Torito goat head. Goat head treats pain. We are on the upper level of Santa Cruz Farm and we're looking where it's kind of dry and neglected. That's where the goat heads thrive. I'm surprised we haven't found some. Sometimes they're just all over, but what happens is people eradicate them by pulling them so they don't recede. I'll tell you what, get on your bicycle, you'll find the toritos, because they always give you a flat tire. Hmm, no, I am not seeing any. How odd, that is so strange. Here we go, oh, beautiful. This is a nice one. We'll find the center, ow, and we'll pull it by the root. See all the goat heads? See all the torito? Those are the little goat heads. Torito means little bull, little bull, but we call them in English goat heads, not little bull heads. But it's because they have that wicked um, kind of horns like a little bull might. That's good. That's a nice one. We got it with the root and all. 
There's a lot of good medicine there for treating pain. That's a beauty. This is what we were looking for also, the mallow. Mallow is a demulcent. That means that it gives moisture back to your skin. So we don't need a whole lot. We'll just get a little bit. This one's nice because it has the blue flower. Yeah, this is blue mallow. It's a, a native, I believe, of the Americas. And that just feeds moisture right back in your dry skin. And that's beautiful. That's a good amount there. Oh, nice. Look at all the rose petals. These are really good for your skin. And what I found about roses is the whole stem is beneficial because of the chlorophyll. And the wonderful aroma, fragrance of roses extends into the stem. So that's nice right there. Now we'll go cook these. There's our roses. There's our torito. That's beautiful. Then our malva, that's such good medicine. And then the rose hips that are full of sunshine and vitamin C. That'll be good. So now the herbs have cooked down nicely. We're going to strain them out. Now we just have our strong tea that has cooked down by half. Here's our lard. This is a really nice, fresh, natural product to use in your food. Gorgeous, that's beautiful. And now we're gonna boil this tea down until there's really just about an inch of tea at the bottom. And that means all that other tea has been cooked out, but it's been also cooked through the beeswax and the manteca. So now we'll leave the lid off Turn the heat up a little and bring up a strong boil. And we're ready to pour our cream. Now the cream has set. It does have a little moisture at the bottom, but that'll just stay there. You'll just, we'll just be working off the cream on the top. And we'll test it now. It's still setting up, but it's, it's pretty nice. And I'll use a little bit of this on Don Bustos' aching back. Yeah, man. You got a picture of me bent over harvesting chili. <laughs> and this is the result of the harvesting of the chili. <laughs> oh, yeah, that yeah. chili harvesting back is saying, oh, thank you for the remedio. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> now it really feels good, too, man. You can just feel the, the smoothness of it. And then you can feel it in the skin and it's starting to rub down into the muscles and soreness. <laughs> like when I come in from a, 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 a day of, of working and I feel really sore, we'll use these, these uh, bombs and lotion Camila makes. And, you know, we have a, a whole medicine shelf of remedies and medicines right there in the backyard that Camila knows how to how to prepare and how to apply them in a way that's beneficial <laughs> to everybody and the community. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that was really great. Thanks. Thanks to Grandma. Yeah, thanks to Grandma. <laughs> you want me to help you carry that? Are we looking for a Valdez? Yeah, Valdez. Valdez, Valdez. Looking for Grandma's grave here. Let's see, Emilio. Emilio remembers Grandma. Grandma was taking care of Emilio when she uh, when she passed away. This is Emilio's grandpa right here. Ah, oh, Emilio. Yeah, the, my mom's is right there. See, this is Grandpa right here, Emilio. Look, and that's Grandma. I. I I know, right here, see? Grandma. Grandma. I know, right there, and here's our mom, here's our mom, watch. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so the day my mom passed away, she was taking care of Emilio, and I came up from the field. And she goes, hey, I'm tired, mijito. I'm going to go take a nap while you take your lunch break. So I told her, okay, no. And I walked with her across the acequia, the bridge across the acequia. She went to take a nap, and Aww. then she never woke up. Aww. So Emilio was the last one that got to hang out with her. She hung out with Emilio, taking care of Emilio. <laughs> She's still taking care of him. <laughs> but that was it, man. That was the last, last thing, man. I got to tell my mom goodbye, and Emilia got to see her, and that was it. <laughs> this is a trip, man. My mom would was probably all mad. My dad passed away a little bit later, huh? And then my aunt goes, oh, I bet your mom is really mad now that they put him so close to her. <laughs> but the whole thing is, too, is who stayed with the land and who was in charge? The women, no, the moms. Your mom definitely yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was no doubt who was the boss any time. No? See, the land that we farm on now has always belonged on the women's side of our family. So it was my mom's, Valdez. It was Genara Valdez, Altalgracia Valdez, and then her grandma before that, that owned that piece of land. So women on both sides of our family, either Bustos or Valdez, have always been the stronger family that, that the stronger side that holds the land and the and kind of like the family together. <laughs> so that was my mom, Trinidad Valdez. Yeah. So if it wasn't for for my mom, no, we wouldn't be farming. Yeah. Right? Your mom was very smart. Oh yeah, yeah. She's what saved everything there. So it's been a long time though. La noche está llegando y yo sigo trabajando para mantener a lo que quiero tanto para This tree's probably been here, oh heck, I don't know how many years, but it's been here since before I was a kid and already given fruit. So, and if we take care of it, it will be good for the next generation to be able to, to eat good, healthy food from it. What we're trying to do here is just take off all the old growth, all the stuff that has been producing for years and years, and then encourage the next, the next growth, the next new generation of growth. Just like we do on the farm, just like we do with our nephew Nettie and Angel. All these young kind of folks that come around to learn is, we want to encourage the new growth. We want to see people flourish. We want to see the land continue to flourish. And we're doing that right here in this tree. The trees like the farm and the acequias, these things are all meant to outlive the individuals. This tree, the pruning, is part of the process. I think about this all the time, about how this tree and how the farm really is a metaphor for, for us. And, and for what we're doing, I know it's really important and I keep talking about, oh, the next generations are going to farm it. Emilio with his Down syndrome and his disability isn't going to take over the farm directly. Nettie, my nephew, really wants to farm, but life goes on and we hope that we can help facilitate him farming the farm and, and, and that's what we're hoping for. But the way I feel about it is that we're setting up, or I hope people understand the value of a calling, huh? This is what the Creator meant for me to be. And this is what other people, the Creator has meant for other people to do. So if you're not, if you're not a Bustos, or if you didn't come from the Santa Cruz de la Canela land grant, or if you haven't suffered as much as we've suffered, that's okay. Because all of us have a calling. It's a calling, dude. Simple and easy enough. Mm -hmm.